It is 10.30 p.m. in L.A. right now. My voice is clearly on its last legs. But when I was live streaming on Twitch for you guys and I saw this piece of information, I thought in terms of an NBA fan, how badly would I want to see it? And everyone agreed unanimously that this was such important news that I should scrap whatever remaining brain cells I have left <laughs> and push this video out. So all I'm asking in return is smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, consider subscribing, and if you're already subscribed, turn on my notifications because we have a lot to cover here. And also, if you want to get to know me as a person or you just want to interact with me, follow me on twitch.tv forward slash flight mic. All my socials are in the description down below. Now that we got all that out of the way, cue the intro. Mic check one, two, one, two. Guys, we already know the calamity of tonight. We already know how remarkable tonight is. And as a result of the events that occurred tonight, well, there were some exchanges and there were various reactions. And I'm going to try to get you to each and every one of them and scrape the internet for everything you pretty much want to see as a result of tonight's incredible Western Conference semifinals game seven. So the first thing that we want to discuss is, of course, Damian Lillard was not going to go out of this quietly and he had this to say the first comes from damian lillard and cj mccollum because they were absolutely brilliant damian lillard and paul george had a little bit of beef in the beginning of the nba bubble and i made a video about that as well it's in the description down below but a synopsis of everything that happened between them it got really personal. Damian Lillard's sister called out Paul George's wife and pretty much called her trashy. And it got really, really personal, but they squashed it at the end. Damian Lillard calls out Patrick Beverly and says on Twitter, I guess I should extend this Cancun invite since I haven't made my arrangements yet. CJ McCollum, his teammate, said, My last tweet before I finished this class, they did vote they ain't want to play no more, but I didn't think they was going to go out like that. Look at this beautiful exchange that they all have together. CJ McCollum tweets at Damian Lillard, Yo, you got an extra villa available in the Cabo. CJ McCollum also said if they fly private, they can get into Mexico for sure. Should probably get the big jet. And then CJ McCollum, of course, says that it ain't Pat Bev's fault, though. He got above his average and did his job. Props to CJ McCollum. He didn't go in too hard on Patrick Beverly either. A very respectful sparring of the words, if you ask me. There's a bunch of reactions on NBA Twitter as well. But I think my absolute favorite one has to be from Jack Harlow, who tweeted at Lou Williams, beat me there, don't meet me there. And I wonder if that's a Magic City reference because they bumped into each other at Magic City before, which is hysterical to me. But that is all a precursor to the main event of the evening. How do the two stars of the Clippers feel about choking a three to one lead? That's not a good feeling at all whatsoever. And they were actually a favorite to make it to the NBA Finals. Here's what Kawhi Leonard had to say about his future with the organization. Bear in mind that the Clippers kind of dug themselves in a hole. They gave up five first round picks to the OKC Thunder for Paul George. But on top of that, they gave up their 2020 first round pick for Marcus Morris. So it's not like they're in the best scenario either. And the scariest part is both Kawhi Leonard and Paul George are a season away from having the option to enter free agency. So this entire era for the Clippers could end really shortly if things don't work work out next year. But Kawhi Leonard and Paul George were quite vocal about their stance on the, their future with the Los Angeles Clippers. And here's what each of them had to say. Uh, you know, I'm glad that, uh, you know, we got a chance to, I guess, finish out the season. Uh, NBA did a good job of, uh, you know, hosting this event and, uh, you know, letting players come out and play. Well, uh, yeah, everybody wants to play. Um, once you put on that jersey, it's, it's no thinking back at all. Um, it's time to, you know, lay some money. What's next for this team? Uh, just got to build, build some chemistry. Uh, got to get smarter. Uh, you know, we really, really pieced up the team together. Uh, you know, we were close. Uh, you know, Denver's great. Uh, we shot ourselves in the foot the last three games. Uh, you know, the last three games were pretty much a mirror. You know, uh, us coming in and, 
you know, now they're able to score the ball in the third or the fourth quarter. And, um, you know, tonight was just a mirror of it. Um, you know, and, you know, those are the things that, you know, you got to learn and grow from. And, uh, you know, Denver did an amazing job. Uh, the coach did a great job. Um, you know, when once uh, a team is playing uh, us a certain way, um, you know, trying to get the ball out of my hands or packing the pain, uh, we, we got to know what to do. Um, and we can't panic if, uh, you know, we're not making shots. If I'm not making shots, uh, you know, we gotta, that's the thing we got to get smart at. Um, even being there, you know, double digits, um, second half, um, just learning lessons. Uh, like I was just saying, uh, just, just being smarter, just knowing uh, us being able to, um, you know, know what to do in situations when uh, guys are playing in certain ways and, um, you know, just seeing how we could get some execution down the stretch, guys knowing exactly where, to, where they need to be um, in crunch time or in situations where we can't put the ball in the hole. Uh, and, you know, you know, those are the big things. Uh, that's what, you know, championship teams have. Uh, you know, they have a chemistry um, of how to get out the hole uh, when they're in it. And uh, they know exactly what to do when, you know, uh, a team is throwing different scenarios at you. What changes to the roster would you like to see? None. None. Um, first year together. Wait, hold up. Look, I was originally going to just let this interview play out and just show you guys the most important parts, but this is a huge misconception. This is not their first year together. Him and Kawhi Leonard literally joined a pre-made team that almost beat the Golden State Warriors in its entirety last year. They joined a team with phenomenal coaching, great ball movement, and an excellent supporting cast of players. They joined Lou Williams, Montrez Harrell, Ivica Zubox, everyone except for like Marcus Morris this year. So this isn't their first year together. This is Kawhi and Paul George's first year together, but not the Clippers' first year together. Back to his interview. Um, you can't even say we want to change our roster. We like what we got. Um, I mean, we've been saying it all years, just chemistry, being together. Um, the more we can be together, the better we will be. Um, it's year one. It's year one. We got a lot to reflect on, a lot to look at. Um, going forward and to get better with. Um, I mean, they, they made shots. They made shots. It's been really the uh, the tail of the series. Um, they've been making shots, playing at a, a faster pace. Um, you know, and, and they got free tonight. Thought uh, Jamal got free. Um, Jokic made big plays, kept the ball alive, big rebounds. Um, you know, they they. They play well. They play well to close the game out tonight. But I mean, you, you personally. How did I feel? Yeah. As they're making shots? Yeah, as a, as a fourth quarter with a goal, I'm sure you're pretty shocked. Um, I mean, from my perspective, just keep fighting. Um, keep fighting. Try to see the ball go down. Um, you know, we, we kind of got cold in that fourth. Um, all we could do was fight at that point. We tried to get stops. We tried to, you know, force them into turnovers. Um, they did a great job of playing through that. Um, they made big plays, big shots, and uh, you know, it, it just looked like we couldn't get enough stops that we needed. We just we get the same looks. We've been getting the same shots that we've been getting in the first half of all those games. We just, as a as a squad, just went cold. Um, and on the other side of that. They kept just running their stuff. They kept running it with pace, with speed, um, and getting the looks they want to get. Um, you know, for them, they're missing those shots in the first half. Um, we're making ours in the first half, um, and it's complete opposite in the second half of each of those games. So, um, I don't think the previous games were wearing on us. Um, again, we we knew we had to win this. It's game seven. Um, we just went cold as a team. Well, I, that hurts. That, that hurts. It hurts. Um, it hurts, but um, we move on. You know, again, um, year one together, first first run um, together. Of course, we wanted to win this, um, but we've been very optimistic um, about us being together and, and, and 
building something um, going down the road.